This screencast is to support this lesson on food and cooking um, with a language focus of um, verbs followed by ing or the infinitive. It's taken from Language to Go Intermediate Unit 20 uh, by R. Wildman and C. Crace, published by Longman. So you can see the lesson starts with some vocab and speaking. Then there's some listening for the students to do. Um, some language taken from the listening is then focused on and they're given practice of that language after the focus on the rules. Okay, so to start the lesson, we need to do some kind of lead in to get the students thinking about food and cooking. I quite like exercise two here. You could use that um, as some discussion questions for the students to talk about at the beginning of the lesson. So you could put that before exercise one. Alternatively, you could come up with your own lead in. Um, just a short activity to get them um, engaged in the topic. And then we can move on to exercise one, which looks at vocabulary and the difference between um, different words related to food and cooking. So let's look at the activity. We've got seven different groups of words. You could do the first one as an example with the students. Tell them they need to look at the words, the three words, and decide what the difference is. So cook, chef, cooker. They can do this as a speaking activity. Um, you could give them some time to make some notes before they talk together if you like. Um, and then think about which ones you need to concept check um, when you're getting feedback. So words like course, um, obviously they'll already know English course, for example, different meaning. Make sure that they understand um, the concept of course. You might want to ask them to give you some examples of fast food and ask some other um, concept checking questions around that. Raw, that's also quite difficult to say, isn't it? Raw, or So you might want to drill that one. Do check the meaning beforehand too. And then the difference between vegetarian and vegan is quite interesting. You could personalise that, ask if anyone in the group is either vegetarian or vegan. And think about the pronunciation of these three words. Students often say vegetable um, and of course it's vegetable three syllables and think about where the stress is vegetarian, vegan. So do some work on um, checking meaning with concept checking questions of tricky vocabulary and drilling um, the more challenging words um, pronunciation wise. Next, we're going to move on to the listening part of the lesson. And um, you're going to introduce Takanori and Gabriella. So you can show these pictures. And you might want to elicit from the students um, what do you think their job is? They're both chefs. And then they can do some prediction, guesswork here uh, with exercise three. What do you think is in Takanori's fridge? Ask them for a couple of examples. Same for Gabriella. And just tell them to write a list of um maybe six to eight items of food that you think are in their fridge. And then when they've done that, see what they've got, have a brief discussion around that. And then you're going to play the listening and they can listen to each of the chefs speaking and tick off any of the foods they predicted um, that they mention as being in their fridge. Um, get them to check together at the end of the listening activity and then get some feedback just to see how many they got right. Next, they're going to do a more detailed listening. It's a true or false um, task. So they're going to listen again to the same audio. And this time they need to answer um, some sentences, um, true or false. 
is four sentences for each uh, Takanori and Gabriella. And they listen and write T if the sentence is true and F if it's false. Make sure they, they're clear about um, what they need to do by doing an example. So you can play the audio up to where Takanori answers this first statement and get them to very briefly tell each other whether they think number one is true or false. Good, true or false, make sure they've got the right answer and tell them, ask them what do they need to write if it's true or false, T or F, very good. And now they can listen to the rest. Play the audio all the way through um, and let them answer the questions and then get them to check their answers together while you listen. While you're listening and monitoring, you can decide if you think they need to listen to it again and do the same task again. Sometimes with detailed listening tasks, the students need to listen more than once because there's quite a lot of information they need to focus on. So if you think they need to listen again, play the audio through again, get them to peer check one more time and nominate students for answers, making sure that you mark T or F next to the appropriate sentence on your slide. Next, the lesson focuses on some language taken from um, the audios that the students have just listened to. So ask the students to look at the two sentences, A and B. You could ask them which person said sentence A and which said sentence B. Was it Takanori or Gabriella? First of all, to give it some context. And then get them to talk together and decide um, which is the correct answer, one or two. So they need to say whether decide in sentence A is followed by the ing form or the infinitive. So I've decided to visit, it's followed by the infinitive. So they just underline that one. And then they do the same activity for uh, B, I avoid cooking. So avoid is followed by the ing form, the ing form. So basically some verbs um, are in English are followed by the infinitive and some by ing and there's not really any rule. So it's quite tricky for students sometimes to get these right. So this is called guided discovery where they look at the example sentences taken from the context, which in our case is the listening, and they work out the rules by, by answering questions about those sentences. They can do this as a group discussion. Once that's been established, they can now look at some other verbs in the box. Okay. The course book tells them to look at the recording script, but we're not going to do that because that just turns it into a reading lesson. Okay. What we can do instead is look at the verbs. And first of all, we need to decide, are there any that we think they may not know or that we'll need to check? So I would say uh, perhaps afford, waste time, give up, keep on, avoid and manage. You could create a little matching task where they have to match the word with the definition. And then think about how to concept check some of these, okay? So keep on, if I keep on doing something, okay, you might want to find the sentence from the recording script yourself to use as an example, because you're taking that then from the listening. I keep on um, making lots of spicy food, for example. What's another word for keep on? Continue, good. I keep on on, I don't stop, I continue. 
right? And then manage to, manage to do something. If I manage to do something, do I succeed? Yeah. Is it easy? No. There's usually some element of difficulty. So think about how to concept check, get them to match the words with some meanings, concept check the tricky ones, drill any of the ones that are difficult to say. For example, avoid. Uh, this oi sound is can be quite tricky. And then you can get them to categorise these verbs into two columns. So you could make a table on your slide um, and in the first column put ing and in the second column put infinitive and they have to put the verb in the correct column. So you could put them into separate groups to do this and discuss together what they think um, goes where. And so, for example, plan to do, so that would go under infinitive, um, waste time doing something, so that would go under ing. So elicit an example, first of all, to get them started and then set them off into groups to do it together. And then get some feedback um, as a whole group and making sure that they can see the corrections that all the verbs are put in the correct columns in feedback, okay? Now they're gonna do some practice. They're gonna practice using all of these verbs in sentences. So the example here is, I've got a new cookbook, so I'm planning or gap more cooking in the future, in future. So we've got the verb do in brackets. They have to use that verb and put it either into the um, ing form or the infinitive def depending on the verb they're using. So they can refer back to the table they did previously where they categorise the verbs um, if, they're, if, they, if they're not sure of the rule and um, they'll see that plan goes in the infinitive column so they know that that is followed by to do. So you could show them the example and then together Get them to do number one. Have you decided mm, eat at home or go out instead? So decide is that followed by an infinitive or an ing form? It's followed by an infinitive. Um, so they need to put the verb eat in the infinitive. Have you decided to eat? Once you're sure that they've understood the task, um, they can do the rest. You can do, get them to do it on their own and then check together before feedback or you can put them into groups and get them to work through them together and then get everybody back together for, for whole class feedback, making sure that um, you ch double check any that they're still finding difficult. Now they're going to do some freer practice, speaking practice using that language that they've been focusing on. So there's some nice discussion questions here, eight discussion questions, and um, it's encouraging the students to use the verbs that they've been looking at in the previous parts of the lesson. So in groups, discuss the following questions about the food you like cooking and eating, Try to use the verbs from exercise seven. So on your slide, you could have those verbs, uh, plan, afford, offer, spend time, etc., etc., um, And just uh, get the students to do the first one as an example. So you could choose a strong student and ask them this question and get them to give you an answer. Um, and then get them to ask another student question two get that other student to answer the question and just remind them that you're you're going to be listening for um, how often they're using the verbs that we've been focusing on in the lesson. Give them as much time as possible to talk together and then get them all back as a group and get some feedback asking the students to tell you who they spoke to and what they found out about that person. If you've got time at the end of the lesson, you could do some post-fluency error correction.